at the 41 acres of uh, unnamed property along the Mohawk River in the town of Clifton Park. I'm going to make our last visit to see what uh, ephemeral spring wildflowers and what other spring season wildflowers we'll find. And right away we come across some common blue violet. It's uh, certainly the most common of all the violets. And here we have uh, early meadow rue, which in just a week's time has already gone to uh, seed pods. Don't know if they'll come in focus for you. Um, this is a batch that I had been walking past and hadn't even noticed in bloom, and now they've gone to seed pods. Early meadow rue. Here we have some long spurred violet. Long spurred violet. These are definitely uh, peaking at bloom right now. Again, they're so named because of the long spur at the back side of the bloom. Another of our spring season wildflowers. See the flower buds hanging, dangling down below. This is one of our Solomon seals, uh, one of our native species. And you have to take a look at the underside of the leaf. And if you look really closely, I don't know if it'll show up. Um, you can just barely see some fine hairs. This is hairy Solomon seal. Another of our spring season wildflowers. This one is in bud, not quite fully opened yet. Uh, the flowers will open up just a little bit more, but not much more than what they are. Ones on the right side are just uh, nearly open. This is Golden Alexanders. And we can still find uh, one of the colt's foot in bloom, this yellow flower. If you look closely at the stem, you'll see it has scales along it, uh, some fuzziness to it, some downing appearance to it. And yet here we have another yellow flower, which is, uh, this one's often confused uh, with the other one. Uh, this is common dandelion. You see the leaves here, very distinctive. Similar yellow flower, but actually quite different when you take a close look at them. But it's the flower stem that gives it away. Colt's foot, shown here, has the scales. And common dandelion, again, has a very smooth stem. So common dandelion just getting started. Colt's foot winding up. Another one of our spring wildflowers. One of our uh, two species of native strawberry. See the leaves are above the blooms. That's the telltale sign of wild strawberry. Woodland strawberry is the other species, and the reverse is true. The blooms and the fruit are always above the leaves. This is wild strawberry. And as often as the case, just a few steps away, here we find woodland strawberry. Again, the blooms are above the leaves. Both of these plants uh, flowering at the same time. Very similar, uh, but slightly different looking fruit between the two species. Both are absolutely delicious. Uh, you will probably pick few in your lifetime since birds and chipmunks will almost always beat you to them. Both are delicious. This is woodland strawberry. Here we are down at the pond and I have not heard or seen um, our resident great blue heron or the osprey or the belted kingfisher. But if you can see in the center of the frame there's a ridge of the back of a fairly large snapping turtle, very slowly swimming just below the surface of the water across the pond. Here we have a fiddlehead stage of a fern. You see a lot of fuzz on the stem. A couple of different uh, specimens coming up here. You see this one's a little taller and the um, the fiddlehead stage is starting to straighten out and you see more of the pronounced uh, three stems to the top of the plant. That's very distinctive features of uh, this specific fern, which is bracken fern. This is my favorite uh, fiddlehead stage fern to eat. Um, you just remove the fuzz. You can easily do that when you throw it in a sink full of warm water to rinse them off, wash them off. Uh, you just lop off the top. Uh, lop off the bottom of the stem where it's tender enough and then what you do is uh, simply uh, blanch them 
and they'll have a very mild asparagus flavor. It's uh, great for soups, uh, that kind of a thing. In fact, a cream of asparagus soup is uh, what you could make from bracken fern fiddleheads. Well, as we make our way along the south side of the pond, along the uh, yeah, road that runs through the property, we see a treetop that's lying in the way. It uh, wasn't here before, and just a week ago, and now we can see why. Uh, we have some beaver activity once again. Uh, not quite a clean cut through uh, most of the way, though, but uh, this was done sometime in this past week. Since this may be one of the last Carolina spring beauties that we see in bloom uh, for this year, just wanted to show it to you one last time. Again, beautiful five petal flower with the pink stripes. Carolina spring beauty. And we're going to give this a try. I don't know if these uh, tiny little flowers will come into view for you. I'm trying to get them to come into focus. This plant is called miterwort, and its uh, flowers are very distinctive. There we go. Uh, you can see uh, near my index finger, uh, it looks like a snowflake. Uh, the petals are cut so fine. Uh, this really interesting little plant called miterwort. Uh, very unique blooms, one of our spring season wildflowers. And I'm very pleased to see these cut leaf toothworts still in bloom. Uh, these are probably the last ones of the bunch out here. Big population of this uh, native species, definitely one of our ephemeral spring wildflowers. Cut leaf toothwort. Now I've come across a couple of downy yellow violets, which uh, must have been hit by. The combination of snow last night and uh, freezing temperatures overnight. Actually, we've had two uh, nights back to back of right around freezing temperatures. Uh, but this is downy yellow violet. And now, along the uh, path through the woods, we've come across a nice specimen of northern spice bush. The uh, flowers are really just kind of uh, withering away now as the leaves are coming out. I don't know if I'll be able to get this in focus for you or not, uh, but there are still some blooms that are open, uh, but they're rapidly closing up. They'll be going to seed. Uh, quite a few blooms on it this year. Northern Spice Bush. And here we have Northern Jack in the Pulpit. It's the same species as Jack in the Pulpit, but as you can see there's absolutely no purple coloration. So this separates it somewhat as a separate subspecies. Northern Jack in the Pulpit.